China is planning to extend its green vehicle subsidies until 2020. Let's bring in Candy's chief spokesperson, Kiwa Lo. Kiwa, great to have you with us here on Thank set. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, a part of the, the expansion of the EV market in China is, is about subsidies. There is a central government subsidy, there is a local subsidy, and then there's a 10% sales tax break, which is going to take, be in place for the next three years or so. What happens if, if these go away? What happens when these go away? Well, first of all, it's no way that they're going to go away. So this subsidy has been in place since two years ago, and it's going to be extended to 2020. And um, uh, with the national and local government in place, as you can see from our recent um, expansion into uh, other six cities, including the big city, Shanghai, uh, Guangzhou, Chengdu, and our hometown uh, headquarter, uh, Hangzhou, we have been having our EVs deliver to all these cities, and this is just beginning. We're going to continue to deliver these cities and to uh, benefit from the government from both national and local subsidy policies. How should we look at the competition? Because in the break, you're stressing that you make the more affordable vehicles. Mm -hmm. You've got BMW saying that, it, that China is going to be the biggest EV market for them by 2019. Daimler is going to be building EVs with, mm -hmm. with BYD. Volkswagen is aiming to have, what, 15 models on the market. So who are your top competitors? Are they local Chinese companies, or are they the foreign companies coming into the market? Well, that's a really good question. I think that's the beauty about candy, because we don't sell the car to individuals so far. So our innovative business model is car share program, just like a Manhattan city bike share. So we want to uh, have our residents to use our car, and they just pay $3 and a half per hour. So this way, they don't have to worry about the, where to charge, the battery maintenance, and what if the, the car is going to be broke down in the middle of the, the road. So this way, uh, we provide both short-term leasing and long-term leasing, and uh, together with the leasing operator and the government, we pro together provide the leasing facilities so they can just go to location A, pick up the car, and stop off the location B. So in that case, we don't think we have any competitors yet. So in terms of leasing, if you're a consumer, I mean, the central government gives the subsidy to the manufacturer, Exactly, correct? yes. The local government gives the subsidy to the consumer. If yeah. a consumer is leasing a vehicle, do they get the same benefit as a consumer who is buying a vehicle? Well, actually, uh, correct you a little bit. Okay. So, uh, ultimate beneficiary is consumer. But however, the, the dealers, so in our case, the leasing operator, they receive the subsidy from local government. So this way, when the dealer receives the local government subsidy, so which already reflect the discounted price, um, which reflect uh, both national and the local subsidies. Okay, so when policy. they get leased, it's a discount, discounted. Exactly. All the subsidies are factored exactly. at that point. Exactly, yeah. Uh, let's talk about the SAC investigation that's going on. Your company mm -hmm. disclosed in March that it has been under an investigation since November of the prior year. So basically, right. we're, we're more than a year into the investigation. Mm -hmm. In March, your CEO in the 10K filing said that a protracted investigation could impose substantial costs and distractions regardless of the outcome and could have an impact on results. Where do we stand with this investigation? It's been more than a year. So mm -hmm. is that the protracted amount of time that your CEO was talking about? Well, what I can see is uh, based on what we disclosed, and this is a fact-finding investigation. So, so far, we have been fully incorporated with the SCC with everything they are requesting. So, so far, we are still waiting for hearing from them. So we don't see any impact at this moment since we haven't really heard from them. All we have to do is incorporating by submitting all the information they, they're requesting, but we don't believe that there was any uh, wrongdoing we have, been do we have done so far, and we believe uh, everything we have done is uh, implied with the law. What, what is the investigation? What are you being investigated for? Well, is it an accounting um, investigation? No, though there is no uh, implication on any specific issue in the investigation itself. So uh, we call it fact-finding. So they basically, it's like an investigation of every facts that they want to look for. Okay, Kiwa, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for coming by. Kiwa Thank you. of Candy Technologies. Tim, you're, you're a shareholder. The SEC investigation is a cloud over the company. It's, it's been out there for a long time, and it's a question about, you know, the, some of the company structures that were used, and in some cases, you know, alleged to have inflated asset values. Uh, I, you know, this is something that you, you obviously have to be cautious about. I think in terms of the underlying company, this is, first of all, a, it's a small market cap company, again, so I talk about this all the time. This, this stock's been all over the place. It's yeah. trading in a range of, of kind of $10 to $22 this year.
year, but they're growing their top line 40 to 60 percent over the last three years. They have just begun to really get into a number of cities, as she talked about. This is a company that needs to show it's profitable. It needs to show that there's a, actually a, a real distribution model for these vehicles. But it's a very exciting time to be investing in this kind of technology in a place that we all know is not only you know, the largest market, it's the largest market by far with a government that's totally incentivized socially to make sure this happens. This is why it's a very interesting company. Right now, they're one of the leaders. But to invest in a emerging market like the China EV market, would you rather, and this is not a would you rather, but <laughs> would you prefer to invest in the manufacturer that actually sells its vehicles as opposed to leases its vehicles in a car sharing program? Well, I think in this case, you want to go with the manufacturer that is that the government is trying yeah, you to support. Need a partner. That, that's yeah. what you. Yeah, you that's what's JV. important about the the Chinese market is you have to go look at Alibaba, right? The reason why they're so successful is because they have government support. So in this case, you have that. And when you talk about the subsidies and potentially whether they will go away, the one thing that China does have is a pollution problem. So I don't think they will go away. I think the government certainly wants companies like this to do well. They have to get that pollution problem under control because that's actually an economic problem that could slow down their economy. I mean, they're targeting 5 million new energy vehicles by 2020. 5 million. It's massive. Yeah. And they, yeah. they, have, massive and they have the right partners. They've got a JV with Geely. Sure. I mean, they're with the, they're with the right auto companies All right. in China. All right. Time now for Pop